If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, please go to Matthew chapter 17. Um, this takes place after the Mount of Transfiguration. So you kind of get a handle on it. Jesus is baptized, and then the Holy Spirit leads him uh, to in the wilderness, and they're on the Mount of Transfiguration. And um, uh, 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 Peter, James, and John, I think, are up there. There might, might not be exactly. Is it Peter and James, or Peter, James, and John? All three of them, right? Thank you, Ben. Um, are up there with him. There's a huge transformation. They hear the voice of God saying, this is my beloved son, obey him. And, uh, and then the whole, uh, the, uh, the Holy Spirit brings the angels and they, they take care of Jesus. He was up there for 40 days. And now he's down off the mountain. Do you think that would change a person? It would change me. I know that. We're going to Matthew 17. So this is after that. He comes down off the mountain and uh, he heals uh, 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 people, somebody who had demons. He, um, he heals them. He rebukes the demons and they come out of him and that's always very good. And now I'm in verse Matthew 17.20. Matthew 17.20. I'm going to start at verse 19. Uh, Matthew seventeen nineteen. Then dis- the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not drive the demons out? And he said to them, Because, wait a minute. Yep. Seventeen twenty. Yeah. Uh, he, he says to them, Because of the littleness of your faith. Jesus says, you can't drive the demons out because of the littleness or the smallness of your faith. He says, he goes on to say this, for truly, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, he says, I say to you, if you have faith the size of a, come on, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing, Everybody say nothing. Nothing Nothing will be impossible to you. But this kind uh, of demon does not go go out except by prayer and fasting. Um, I'm not so much going to talk about the, the, um, uh, the casting out of the demons as I am about the element of faith enough to move mountains this morning. And I'm sharing this with you because I want to talk about change in our lives. We've been talking for the last few weeks about how do we become more real? How does this Christianity that we proclaim truly be a part of our life? What are the characteristics of those things, of of that Christianity that we profess? What does it look like? How how do we know we're, we're living a life that's pleasing unto the Lord. And last week I gave five or six uh, different little points to talk about. Um, and uh, the week before we were in Galatians 5.22 that lists the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Also indicators of a life lived for Christ. I want to share a little bit more today and uh, talk a little bit about change. Because we keep saying uh, you know that we love everybody we have to we tell about what we should be doing but how do we get there you know I hope that you can look back in your life and the change that you were before Christ BC to the change that you are now is measurable and that you say oh my goodness he made such a difference in my life. Oh my goodness, I'm a different person. One of the things we know is that change is progressive and change is mandatory. It is, I wrote something down here. I, I wrote, salvation is predicated on our recognition that we need to change. So what I'm saying is, you know, people say, well, God does it all. Jesus does it all. And I believe that. But there's a reason why someone comes to God. They're faced, you know, uh, with the hypocrisy of their life. They're faced, they're confronted by their sin. They know that they've messed up. They come because they're fearful that they're not ready for heaven. 
fire insurance, I call it. So we come for uh, uh, many different reasons, but all with the knowledge in our heart that something has to change. It is the corner. It is the cornerstone that Christ builds his relationship on with us. The the fact that that we know we need change, we need to also understand that. From the moment you accepted Christ in your heart as your personal Savior, and I'm looking around, I think everybody has here. If you haven't, see me after church. I got some good news for you. But um, if we believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, if we have received him in our heart as our Savior, not just the Savior of the world, but my Savior, he died on the cross for me, yeah, he died for everybody, but he died for me, for Vicky Triano. He saw me in my sin and said, come on up a little higher. He said, I can take care of that for you. And so I was born again, right? We're all there, right? So if we're born again, Jesus now is the very center of our life. He resides in our heart. And, and at that moment, we begin to change. Now, some people have this boom, kind of thunder and lightning change, you know. It, it really wasn't that for me at all. It was almost, I mean, I was emotional a little bit, but I wasn't sure what I was doing was correct. I wasn't sure, you know, remember, I was a Catholic with a capital C, you know. And, but I, but the thought that Jesus paid it all for me, that I didn't have to earn uh, salvation, that it was a gift, it's a gift for me. And I knew I was a sinner. Oh my goodness, I was a sinner. From that moment, God begins to change us. Now, as I said, some people, boom, they, 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 they get up from the, the, the front of the, of the stage or wherever they are. Yes, Ron? Well, I don't know. You're in the middle of my sermon. I don't know if you can or not. But go ahead. <laughs> this family that I'm counseling, uh, the husband has, has a problem. And the problem is that he doesn't subscribe to the fruits of the Spirit. And he's not going to change. He needs to change to the fruits of the Spirit, which will change his heart. Yeah. But he can't do it without the Lord, Ron. Well, he's, he, he says he has the Lord. Yeah, well, then that's where it's got to... That's... Yeah. So that's that's where we start with the Lord. Because if we say that we're born again, if we say thank you, Ron, if he we say that God dwells within us, well what does it say over here? That nothing is impossible. Right? Last week, who was here last week? Not you, Sue, you were climbing mountains. But last week Faith to move mountains, faith to save you. Thank God you got to pray in church for you. Uh, so last week I shared with you, and some of you chuckled when I asked for prayer, uh, because there was this one person. Remember I was telling you they 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 make me crazy. I don't even I don't even know how to handle it because they make me so crazy. And some of you thought I was kidding. I was not kidding. I was desperate. I was asking all of you to pray for me because I can't do it. Because she drives me crazy. I want you to know that in order for my heart to change, it's going to be a process. And it's going to be me dying and God living in my life. It doesn't matter that she's a bully. It doesn't matter that she's, that she's the sole cause of people losing their jobs and their livelihood. It doesn't matter that she is such a mean person. That is not my concern. My concern is that I am called to love her, to pray for her, and to be a constant witness for her. And I have to tell you, I need to change. Because last week, well... I still am working on it. You know what I'm saying? So we have to recognize that it all doesn't happen at the moment that we receive Christ. Our salvation is there. But we walk out that salvation individually. The Lord brings us to those areas in our life of the old man that we've kept. You know, the old man, 
the way we usually handle things. Now you're a new creature. But I'm telling you, it's taking that the Lord provides for us an opportunity to change. We're still in a rut of the old man many times. And, you know, God could, you know, at that moment, many times things are changed. But there are certain things that God still needs to work on in all of us. If we aren't moving forward with the Lord, we are returning to a life not committed to Christ and not moving forward in Christ. Now, the author of our change is Christ. It is God that brings about the knowledge the revelation, the personal revelation knowledge, hey, this has got to change. Your mouth does not come up to where your life is li- the other way around. Your life does not come up to affirm what your mouth is saying. There's hypocrisy in your life. There's things that have to be changed. The Lord needs to renew us. In the front of the bulletin this morning, I had the guys from Pivot Ministry, but Second Corinthians 5.17 there says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. So why do we continue to sin? Why do we continue to not be able to get along with everybody? Why are we still struggling with um, uh, gossip or sin, some sin in our lives or, or whatever it is. Why is that still there? I'm asking, why is that still there? Why? Why is it still in our hearts? Because the old man is still there. And it's not because we don't want Christ. But we want the old way more. Listen, I'm going to talk to you as a pastor today because it's important for us to get this in our hearts. Christ links change, moving mountains, with faith. That if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we could tell that m- mountain to move from here to there, and it goes. Well, I don't know about you, but there are mountains in my life that are not made of rock and dirt and what have you, shale. The, the mountains in my life have to do with am I walking in peace with all people. The mountains in my life are love those that are the most unlovable and be at peace with all people. Those are mountains in my life. I don't know what mountains are in yours. That's between you and God. But I know that if I proclaim with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, if I am not walking in that, if their mountains keep stopping me from going forward, my, the proclaiming brings no fruit, brings no uh, uh, reward, brings no harvest. They're dead words. Now, I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to me, too. You know that. Go to Hebrews 11.1. 1. We know this, we know this uh, verse. Hebrews 11.1. 1. It's, uh, it's the great faith verse. This is one we always turn to when we start talking about faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things. Some of your Bible translations say, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the men of old gained approval. So in in, uh, New American Standard, it says, now faith is the assurance, absolutely assured, assurance of things hoped for. It's as real as this chair. It's as real as this podium. It's as solid as the rock of Jesus himself. So our faith is in that hope that Jesus is within us. That Jesus will do things through us as we decrease and allow him to come forward. 
that's such an important verse. You should really have that out, uh, underlined. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You know, we can't physically see Jesus. I never have. Some people say they've seen him. I don't know. Yeah, I never have. But I still know that I know that I know that Jesus is the one that saved me. Jesus was the variable in my life that I could never deny. That when I met Jesus, there was a change in my heart. There was a change in my life. There was a change in my vision. And I am not the same. But it just doesn't end there. We have to deal with those that sinful nature that hasn't been given up unto the Lord. But we need to do that. It is so important. Transformation starts with faith. We will never see victory if we're not transformed. We'll never see victory in our life. Because you know, it's progressive. So when I'm a new baby Christian... And I go, oh God, please, I need a parking place. And the Lord provides a parking place for me. Or something crazy like that. Lord, I don't have any money today. I'm hungry. I need to get lunch. And you go in your pocketbook, you go in the old the old pockets of some old clothes you got. You ever do that? You're like, (laughs) and the pizza man's coming, I'm going through pockets trying to find another five dollar bill. You know, and the Lord comes through. Well, that little step of faith solidifies the faith in in Christ that cannot be taken away. So when we're brand new Christians, those little things the Lord allows to happen in our lives, so we'll grow. But we don't stay there. You know, I mean, I, I, st- I still pray for parking space. <laughs> I got to admit. Every once in a while, I still pray for a parking space. Lord, I got to go all the way on. Get me a parking place closer. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he says, you got sneakers on. Go for a walk, you know. <laughs> but now we're into some really nitty gritty things if you've been walking with the Lord you're, there are things in your life that you know I'm sure if you're married or if, I'm sure if you are in a relationship or have close friends that are Christians or what, they could tell you all the things that you need to deal with <laughs> but that's not how God works God works with us individually His relationship is with us, right? So the first thing I want to ask you, do you see the need for change? And this is rhetorical. I don't want you saying yes or no or whatever. Just listen to me. The first question is, do you see the need for change in your life? Are there things in your life that aren't sanctified, that aren't set apart. This individual that I'm having trouble with in my own heart because there's so much negative stuff with her that I just just can't get by it. The Lord is saying to me, well, you better get by it because this isn't some parking lot. You're in her life to bring the good news of Christ. You better get over it. You better give me that, Vicki, or you're not going to move forward. I have placed her in your life, not for her, for you. Because when that time in your life where you can give it to me and we can change that in you, that transformation can happen, then she'll see the love in your heart. But she's not seeing the love in your heart right now. If there's a habitual sin that we're involved in, it could be sexual stuff, it could be um, whatever it is, whatever it is, talking about people, gossip, you know, uh, whatever it is that, that you find yourself in the same thing. When we find ourselves in that situation, what do we do with it? How do we change? How are we transformed into more of the image of Christ. Because I'm going to tell you something. We will never be able to stand up for Christ and truly bring his love to 
our community, uh, wherever we go, if we're still concerned with our own prejudices and we're still dealing with our own situations and it's still bringing us down and throwing us in the muck and the mire that we came out of, that the Lord died for so that we wouldn't stay there, that we were still, and what we still go back to that junk. I'm talking to brothers and sisters this morning. There is no reason why we can't change the world for Christ. There's more than 12 people here. We may be small, but we're not that small. 11 men, one fell away. 11 men changed the course of all of humanity. I'm just talking about East Adam and East Hampton and somewhere else, maybe someplace else. There's no reason why we can't. And so we dedicate ourselves to that, to the Lord, for the Lord, first of all, I want to just say, first of all, to show us, to show us what our problem is. If we, do we want to really see? Do we want to re- come on, or are we just saying that's the way I am? Well, I'm a little bossy, but that's the way I am, you know. I'm telling you, it's not the way you are. You've been created for good. You've been created for life. You've been created for peace. You've been created for love. We're not created to be bossy or belligerent or to do any of those things. Judge and be so negative with people, condemning people from the mouth of Christians. That's not our job. Our job is to live the Christian life. It's not up to us to be pointing out everybody else's fault but rather to have the Lord touch our lives so that we are transformed into Christ. Let the Lord convict. We can say somebody's in sin all we want. It's not going to change them unless we are truly communicating God's love with them. God will change the person. He changed us. He changed us. He took us out of the miry clay. That's our God. That's what this is all about. Whether you're in school, whether you're at work, whether you're working at the clothing bank, whether you're on ministry work, wherever you are, a chest down, wherever you are, there are things that are prohibiting you from going forward. Have the courage and trust in God, the faith in the solid rock to be able to go to him and see that you need to change. Ask him to show you. Transformation is progressive. And the first question is, do you want to change? Now, if you really, I'm telling you, I want to change with this woman. I don't know what it is in me. I was always the one that if somebody was bullied, you know, I stood up for them. Maybe because I was bullied, I was hoping somebody would stand up for me. I don't know. But that's been, so that's, but that's in B.C. That's before Christ. That doesn't have a a place in my heart anymore. Yes, we stand for those that are being bullied or whatever. But God still wants us to love all people. There is, we have to be truthful and honest with ourselves before we can take the next step. Most of us need a breakthrough. And you know, sometimes we, we pray about breakthroughs and what that means and everything. But if you're caught up in a habitual sin, or if you're caught up in seeing the same tree that you're going around over and over again, that same part of your personality, I'm, so I, I'm a little straightforward. No, you're condemning. You know, we like to put a nice spin on things. I know I do. Well, I'm a little straightforward. No, you're condemning. You've got to love them first before you can ever hope to show them that they're, they're, there's a way out of their sin. We need the honesty of God. And I'm going to tell you something. We need to be accountable to one another. In this church, with all of us here, we know that you all love the Lord. We all know we love the Lord here. There are people, that you, some of you sacrifice daily for him. I know some of you give sacrificially in the offering plate. I understand all of that. But I, I need to tell you, we have blind spots. Remember the story about the balloons in my face? Didn't see the truck. We all have blind spots like that, that balloon. No matter what. So we need to promise... 
that we will be honest with ourselves. And we need our brothers and sisters to be able to talk to about those things. I, I need to be able to go to Ben and say, Ben, I'm having a problem in this area. What do you think? And, and I need to hear Ben. Because Ben will tell me the truth. Do you know that about Ben? Ben will tell you the truth. So if he says to me, well, I think, Pastor, that, uh, that you've got something against that person. Really? Let me go back to the Lord. Maybe I do. You see, if we want to change, we're going we're gonna to do everything we can to lay ourselves on the altar and to change. And don't be overwhelmed because, you know, when I start talking about this and I was, <laughs> as I was preparing for this message, I started getting really, oh man, I'm such a mess. Oh no, I gotta change everything. Oh my goodness, you know, bad attitude here, rah, rah, here, you know. The Lord will bring to your heart what, to, what, what you need to do. He will never overwhelm you and never get to the point where you're so distraught about things. That you're in despair. Do you know that's the opposite of faith? That's why Roman Catholics believe that the unforgivable sin uh, or the sin against the Holy Spirit is that you lose hope. That's what they say. Now, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. But I will say that there's a point in all of that. Because when you lose hope, you lose faith. And when you lose faith, how can somebody, how can somebody redeem you? How can you accept the redemption of Christ if you lose faith? So keep yourself in the hands of the Lord and don't let the devil overwhelm you. But go to him and ask him. There's situations in all of our lives that only God can straighten out. Only God. So as we commit ourselves to the Lord, as we submit ourselves to God and truly want change and we pray for it, we're going to become more intimate with God. You know, he, he's going to become closer to us than he ever was before because he hears that cry of our heart. He hears it when you say, God, I've got to change. I, I, I want to be better. I want to do better this week than I did last week. I, I want to be known as your son or your daughter. He hears that. And you know what he does? He goes like this. He listens a little closer. You're drawing him closer into your heart. And it's just what he's waiting to hear. And then you'll meet a person like I'm dealing with. <laughs> oh, you're the one that the pastor was talking about last week. <laughs> Who'll know just what buttons to push. <laughs> Maybe somebody in your family, you know. July 4th is coming down around. We're going to be with family. Who knows? There may be somebody in your family that God's going to use to point out some place where you have to have faith and grow and change and become a different person. Yes. Do you want to be healed? He's by, he's by the... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Exactly. And it's a joyous thing. It really is joyous. You know, this whole week, every morning I pray for her. I ask God to bless her. I can't tell you that it was easy the first day. <laughs> I can't tell you it was easy. It wasn't easy. But I want the Lord more than I want to be righteous with her. I want the Lord. I want us today to check our produce aisle. You know, when uh, Jesus gave the sower, goes out to sow his seed, that parable. And he says the seed is the word of God. And he, and he, he ends it by saying, and they will produce harvest 30, 60, or 100 fold. What's the difference in the harvest? It's the ground. It's the nurturing of it. It's the ability to produce healthy fruit. Galatians 5.22, we've gone over this last week or the week before, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. What's that? Long-suffering, patience, yeah, yeah. 
Long suffering. Yeah, long suffering. <laughs> Forbearance, that's it, right. Patience, uh, perseverance, that's right. How's our fruit? Are we producing 30, 60, or 100 fold? I want everything that God has for me. I want everything for you that God has for you. Man, oh man, can you imagine the dynamic this little church would have in this community, in our families, in the people we work with, in the people we go to school with, in the the people that we run into every day? Nothing would stop us. And our hearts would be lifted because we can see the fruit. We know that we're changing every day. That's what I want. I hope that's what you want. Because you can't not go forward. See, I'm telling you, there's not really a big choice. If you want to go on with the Lord, we will change. We must change. We become more like Jesus every day. We just can't stay the same. Well, I want to, I'm just not going to grow. You know, I'm into heaven, so, you know, I I got saved. I got, you know, fire insurance, I'm not going anywhere else. You know, I'm going to heaven, and I'm good. I'm good. You know, in, in a church, we don't have this here, really, because we're small. But in a church, pastors will tell you that there are those that are on the outskirts of the church. They come into church and they sit in the back rows. Sorry, Daniel. They they sit in the back rows and they sit along the sides maybe and they come in with their Bible and they quietly just look at their Bible. They follow the sermon. And then when after we pray, after the pastor prays, they say, Amen. And they're out of here. Right? Then you've got the next layer of folks that come, open up their Bible, and they're there, and we share and we pray and and we say amen, and they kind of stick around for fellowship for a little bit. But then, brothers and sisters, then we have a core. In this little church, we have a core that's great. And the core, not here because they want to look good to the pastor. God knows that. (laughs) They're not here because they just want to work and work and that's all they do. No. They want to get closer to where the fire is. And so you see it in their life. You see it in their generosity. You see it. It's part of who they are. And as I'm, as I'm preaching this this morning to all of you, faces are coming in my head like crazy because, as, you know, I'm thinking about generosity and there's three or four people that just boom popped in my head. That, you know, kind. I'm preaching about kindness and four more people pop in my head from the church because there's a group of people here who want the Lord and want to be in, not in the inner core of Christ Community Church, although it's nice, but they want to be where the fire is. They want to be where the Holy Spirit is. They want to reflect the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. The produce that we show in our lives, 30, 60, 100 fold, depends on that question. Do you want to change? I pray you do. I'm praying for you. And if anybody wants to pray, I'm available. And our leaders are available. And, um, and we're going to walk through this thing together. We're going to be accountable one to another. And we're going to grow deeper in the things of God. Just very quickly, I've kept you here too long already. But let me just... Um, so this week I'm going to ask you to do a few things. I want you to stop this week and ask God to show you the areas that you need to change. It may be situations or people, your job, your family. But ask the Lord, what do I need to change first, Lord? There's so much. (laughs) That's not for you, but for me. (laughs) You said that, really. There's so much, God, that needs to be changed in my life. Where do I start? So you need to stop. You need to ask. You need to be in a place that you can hear whether you're in prayer or whether you're a quiet time someplace, but you individually need to hear where God is leading you. I know that he speaks to me most effectively during my quiet time in the morning. The second one is to ask help from the Holy Spirit and, um, 
and from a trusted friend. Be accountable one to another. I'm not saying I want you to stand up here and tell me your sin in front of everybody. I don't want to hear it, and most of us don't want to hear it. Unless you need us to intervene. But find someone. Find someone that you can trust. You know, step out in faith. Look for somebody who's mature in the faith. Look for somebody who's walking in, in the faith. Not somebody perfect, because you're not going to find anybody perfect in this church or in any other church, I might add. But look for an accountable partner where you can just say, I, you know what, I'm working on this thing. Will you pray with me about it? Will you walk with me with it? The third thing I want you to remember is you always go against your feelings. You know, no matter what inside you may have anger or disdain or you may see the sin all the time in that other person or uh, in a situation or whatever, you may be outraged because it's a bad situation and you're going to make it right. You can't make a situation right until you're right. So don't go on feelings. Go on the, on the cornerstone that is our faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Fourth thing is to continue to pursue the presence of God. Don't make God just a side note while you're driving to work. Oh God, uh, be with me, Lord. Uh, in, you know, watch over me in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Make it a priority to be with God. I know we're all busy. But even if you take a few minutes and go someplace private and continue to pursue God's presence. In our lives, we're so busy that we miss the presence of God so much. I'm doing services five or six times a week in Southington. And then, of course, here. Well, I'm always in the Bible, Lord. I'm always preaching. That, that, that's not pursuing the presence of God. That's speaking what I know, speaking what God in, encourages me to speak for whomever I'm, I'm, I'm working with or, or uh, wherever I am. The presence of God is for me personally. The presence of God that I need is when I can feel or know, know more than feel, but know that he's with me in that quiet, intimate spot. Pursue that. Finally, I just want to let you know that in the book of Isaiah, in 61, 61 chapter, well, actually, uh, Isaiah 32, that, that chapter, he talks about that, that the people of God, that we are the priests of God, priests for God, and that we have become a shelter. See, you can't shelter anybody if you're so concerned about how you look or what you're saying. In order for us to be a shelter, we need to be with God because only Jesus is their shelter. So we need Jesus. So it, it talks about being a shelter, being, being there for them, standing next to a person, walking them through, walking them with Almighty God. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's a committed Christian. That's somebody who's maturing in God. Not just praying for a parking place, but rather praying for a soul that needs it more than anybody you know. I've got my work cut out for me. <laughs> oh, she doesn't know what she's come walking into because I'm committed that God, I need God to change me so I can love her and I can get Jesus in her heart. And I'm not going to tell you her name because I'm believing God will have me bring her to church one day. Yes, Lord, I believe in it. <laughs> but we all have someone. So this week, let that be our call to find the presence of God and let him change us. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's stand. Lord, help us change so we can shine. Lord, we sing that song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine. But Lord, it can't shine if it's so covered up with our human nature. 
Lord, we pray right now, Lord, my brothers and sisters, right throughout this this church, Lord, I pray for them and I ask you, Lord, to encourage them to trust you, to submit those things that they don't understand, submit those things that have become mountains in our lives to you, Lord, that you can deal with them and that through faith they will be moved. Father, right now we just thank you, Lord. I, I, I pray for my brothers and sisters. We pray for the person on our left and our right, behind us, in front of us. Lord, we ask you to join us together in love that we would remember one another and continue to pray. Father, we love you this day and we want to be more like Jesus. And we pray this in his wonderful name. Amen. Amen.